Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, October 7th, 2023. Let's get into it. So a lot of people, they tell me, they say, well, why don't you just get on your videos and just stick to one topic? Well, there's a lot of things that I look at. You know, I'm just like you. I, I got to live my life. So I got to know what real estate's going to do. I got to know what silver's going to do. I'm kind of looking at you know, global thermal nuclear war <laughs> of Ukraine. Plus, you know, being being a, a veteran, you know, I uh, I feel for that. Uh, so I do try to post some videos on that. So let's just get into a couple of topics, and then we're going to get into the the theme of this video is about real estate, and uh, we're going to get into that in depth. Uh, but I wanted to hit just a couple of things first before I get into the real estate. So today I was hiking around. Um, by the way, I'm doing a video. Uh, not tonight, but this was Pear Park, P.E.A.R. Now, I don't know if that stands for something. All I see is uh, Pear Park Reserve in Lake County, Florida. I hiked that today. Whoo, man, I, <laughs> I got lost. <laughs> I think I was out there like four hours. I made one hell of a video. It's probably going to have to be two videos. So that'll be coming up on the channel. So let's get that out of the way first. So then I, while I'm out there, I try to listen to the radio, and I'm listening to Mark Levin uh, after, on my way home because it got almost dark on me and okay, he's still crying about the fact that McCarthy's gone McCarthy's a freaking rhino man we got Jim Jordan on the horizon that Trump is endorsed I think it's a great thing and uh, we'll see what happens um, so you know and, and of course they want to make Matt Gates uh, out to be a, a villain here no he, he did a good thing so um, so then I, I come back and I get into this tweet and it was it was fantastic because it kind of I agree, you know it, it kind of verified how I feel about things, especially about getting a new speaker of the house. And this is Elon Musk parody, and I don't know if this is Elon Musk. I, I assume it is, but it says I will forever fight for humanity, even if it means losing everything. Politics are non-significant when you talk about the battle of humanists and extensionists. This is a fight that must be fought, and we will win. Ask yourself which side you're on, humanists or extensionists, I guess. And so I kind of, I, I just replied to that. Let me get my reply up here. And I said, uh, you know, Elon, I, I call myself a populist because I'm for the people. I think that everybody, the individual, has rights, and that's what the Constitution was written for. And uh, so I say, I call myself a populist like myself fighting for humanity, just like he is. Uh, so I guess he calls himself a humanist. And I say, we're, we're up against the globalist elites. And I guess he calls them the extinctionists. I guess they're one and the same, if you want to think about it. They're trying to make us all go instinct with global thermonuclear war. And the elites want power and care nothing about the people. I mean, look at, I was watching a video, uh, Garland Nixon did a great video, and he talked about the fact that we've got just nothing but homeless people on the streets. Uh, everywhere you look, there's poverty. Uh, and these idiots are sending all of our money to fight a war in Ukraine. That what it, Most Americans don't even know where Ukraine is. What do you care about Ukraine? In Russia, we could end the war tomorrow. All we got to do is negotiate with them. Now, they've got a much stronger negotiating position than, than it was a year, a year ago. But... If you deal with them reasonably, and I think Putin's a pretty, I mean, a lot, he gets made out to be the, the great Satan or the uh, the great uh, Hitler, but uh, he's not that. He's, and by the way, I, I encourage you to watch uh, the Duran. Uh, they did an expose. He, Putin just made a huge speech, and it went on for a long time, and I'm not going to cover it because other people have covered it. Uh, if you want to watch Judge Napolitano or the Duran uh, they go into detail about everything Putin said in that speech. Uh, and man, you know, anyway, basically it was just that <clears throat> he's dealing with a lot of lunatics in Washington, D.C. And, and think about it. Why would you send hundreds and fifty billion dollars to Ukraine when we can't even take care of the crime in our cities? We, can, we have an open border. Well, I know the Democrats are all for an open border. We've got millions of people pouring into the country we don't know anything about. Democrats are all for it because they want the destruction of the United States. Anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent because I told you I was going to talk about Florida real estate. <laughs> oh, my God. But let me finish up my uh, my response here. 
They care nothing about the people they are supposed to serve. It's an existential war, which, if the globalists win, could be an extinction event to the human race. From what I understand, I heard recently that we were at DEFCON 2. So, and Russia's uh, running drills where they're running their populace. They've actually built an uh, underground uh, bunkers for their people. Uh, when's the last time you were in an underground bumper here, bunker in here in the United States? Do you think the American people even know that they're facing the possible event of a global thermonuclear war? I doubt it. All right, so uh, we got Trump about the way. Um, so then Rafi Farber, and this kind of leads into where I'm heading with the real estate thing. Uh, he's on Arcadia Economics. Uh, I, he comes on every Friday, and uh, he was explaining housing. And uh, and because and, I kept thinking, I was talking to the guy today. I had to go. That was why I was out that way to do the hike. And uh, and so we were discussing, you know, why in the world aren't housing prices dropping at this point? I mean, when you've got interest rates at 8%, I mean, who the hell's buying these damn houses at 8%? Well, I kind of got an explanation for that. So, so right now, what we had back in 2008 when the great housing crisis hit was most people were in adjustable rate mortgages. And so once those rates, you know, fluctuated or adjusted, a lot of people just, well, they had to throw up their hands and be done with it. And uh, and so right now, people are sitting on fixed rate mortgages. I know I am. I'm sitting on a 3% fixed rate mortgage. Do you think I'm going to, well, if, unless I'm forced out of the house, I'm not moving out of this house. Not at a 3% mortgage when the rates right now are at, at, at 8%. You know, I always wonder if there's, and maybe if you're a mortgage person, you can tell me, I wonder if there's a clause down in that contract because you know you you, you sign sixteen thousand pages of, of of paperwork to to buy a house on a mortgage. I wonder if they can call in that mortgage. And this is something that I thought about that I think you need to think about is if you don't have the cash to pay off that mortgage and they call it, uh, you're screwed, man. You're just screwed. And so I do have the cash to pay it off, but I mean it will wipe out all my liquidity. But I would have to do it just to stay in the house. Now, I could get that liquidity back by trying to sell the house. But imagine selling the house into a down real estate market. I mean, what are you going to do at that point? You know, if, if nobody and that's that was all right. So let's get into the story. So right now, literally, I mean, like nobody's buying houses, <laughs> not at, not not with mortgages. And so what I think is happening here in Florida right now is it, it, People are buying, they're moving out. Imagine, imagine selling your, your million dollar home in New York where, you know, everything's inflated or California where it's worth $2 million and you're coming to Florida and you're getting a bigger and a huger piece of property right on the ocean for, for half the price. So they're paying cash. Well, I imagine they might probably wanted a mortgage, but, you know, so... If they bought it a year ago, they, they got a mortgage. If they're buying right now, they're paying cash. So that market's going to dry up pretty quick. How many people have cash that they can sell in California or New York or Connecticut or New Jersey or where all the, the, the property? Uh, and then, of course, how are they going to sell their property? If you live in, in, in Illinois or wherever up north, who's going to buy your property if they have to get a mortgage? So you can see how this whole real estate thing is just going to implode on itself. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be huge. I, that's kind of what I wanted to say. So I think that right now we've got still a booming market here in Florida for about the next maybe four or five months, and then things are going to crash. Uh, the other thing we got here in Florida is man, I, because of Hurricane Ian, uh, we had uh, the interest. I mean, the um, insurance rates have gone way up. And uh, I got pretty lucky. Mine only went up about three hundred dollars this year. Still a lot, you know. When you, I'm on a retirement income. I don't have anything else coming in. I've got some savings and stuff, and and some IRAs, and maybe some stuff on the side. Uh, but man, I mean, you know, that's a big increase for for people that are retired down here in Florida. They came here to have everything fixed. So you got interest rates going up. My HOA. Uh, I live in an HOA. Unfortunately, it, those rates have gone up. Um, so you can see, you know, I've, I've also been reducing rates, you know, like I'm putting solar panels on the roof. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Uh, there's a new program and, and 
I paid $180 for my, like, I'm just one dude, man. And I keep my air conditioning on 82 degrees <laughs> in the, not when I sleep at night. But at night, the temperature drops down. And, I, and I'm still getting $160, $180, $200 electric bills. I mean, I, those, that's tough to afford, and that's going to go up. But with these solar panels, they're telling me that I'm guaranteed at $83 a month for, for, for the duration until the solar panels are paid off, which would take 25 years. I mean, it's kind of like a student loan, huh? But hey, you know, you give me a, a guaranteed $83 a month, I'm going for it. And they sell that electricity. I didn't get the, uh, the Tesla panels. This is why I'm talking about real estate. I didn't get the Tesla panels. You can, I can sell that uh, electricity back to uh, DTE Energy, which is my, or Duke Energy, excuse me. Well, not D, DTE, God, that's, I'm from Michigan. Duke Energy to, to, sell the, to sell that back. So we got home insurance going up. And, you know, there's another reason that we're having such catastrophes here in Florida. I just put coastal, or if you want to call them hurricane windows, in my house. This has been an ongoing 1.5 year project <laughs> to get the windows into my house. Oh my God, I'm dealing, and I'm going to name them out, man. Renewal by Anderson. It's been a freaking nightmare. First, you know, it took them like eight months to manufacture the windows, and then they came in, and the first crew didn't put them in right. So I had to be home. If I had a job, there's no way I could have done this to get coastal windows in my house. Because uh, I live at the end of a cul-de-sac, and the last hurricane, which was Maria back in 2017, things were slamming into the front of my house. I thought things were going to bust through the windows, so I wanted coastal windows. And I would have thought, I would have thought that the insurance companies would give me a discount for coastal windows, and they do not which is amazing to me. Why wouldn't, I mean, so this is the problem. These insurance companies don't know their butt from a hole in the ground because you should be encouraging homeowners to wind mitigate their houses, to build, and then of course, new construction to build hurricane proof houses, uh, to, to uh, put in coastal windows. Even in central Florida, we get 100 mile an hour winds here. For some, for, so on, well, we did back in 2017. I mean, it, it devastated there. You should have seen the number of roofs that were blown right off of houses. It was insane. It cost the insurance companies a huge amount. So we're kind of getting towards the end of the video. So uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, utilities will go. Well, and, and here's another statistic for you. There's 1.7 million vacant homes in Florida. And I'm watching whole subdivisions being built here in central Florida. What are they going to do with all these houses? Now, I assume that if they're building on these lots, they've probably got buyers for them. But how reliable are those buyers? I mean, if they're dependent on a mortgage and they haven't locked in the rates, I bet a lot of these, these new homes are going to go vacant or people just can't afford them. They're going to have to walk away. It's going to be devastating. So I, I, And then, of course, if you look at another statistic, rents are coming down across the United States. So uh, that, you know, well, you think about a lot of people, they always think, oh, my rent, my rent, my rent. Well, no, think about the landlords. You know, they bought these properties so that they could rent them out and make money based on a certain amount of income or a certain amount of, of renters paying, you know, X number of dollars. Well, if those rents come down and they financed the, uh, the and especially if it's a commercial loan, they're going to have to refinance because uh, those only last like five years. They're going to have to refinance at these higher rates. So the commercial property is going to go bust. I mean, I don't see how, how are you going to afford it? If you got a whole apartment complex that you owe a couple million dollars on and your rents go from 2000 to 1500 a month on, you know, let's say a thousand square foot apartment. Well, you know, you were depending, you were expecting, a lot of them were expecting rents to go up, not down. So now they're going like, okay, and then of course you refinance at 8%. They're just going to go like, okay, I'm done. Renters, you're all evicted. I, I, you know, get out the building. Just We'll invite the government to pay for illegal immigrants to move into the apartment complex. That's the only way they're going to pay for it. So you can see that. And then of course Airbnb is being wiped out because people aren't traveling. Nobody's got the money. And a, a lot of these rental uh, properties, they're dropping their rents. So now those rents are competing against the, uh, the, the apartment complexes. 
So you can just see it's kind of a, a massive storm that's coming that's going to just wipe out the, especially here in Florida, it's going to wipe out the real estate industry. And then, of course, the other th last thing, because of all the new construction that we got going on, I mean, look at oil prices. Oil prices are up to, what, a, eight, well, 80 to to $100 a barrel. It's kind of fluctuating back and forth. Who the hell? Do you, that's going to make your material costs go up. Okay? And look at the forest fires we have. What is, how are you going to get lumber? I mean, right now, lumber is kind of abundant in a way. And we manage our forest here pretty good in Florida. So I don't think it's going to be that big an issue here. But across the United States, especially in Canada, who's going to get lumber to build these houses? Well, that's it for this video. It got a little long-winded. Peace out. Stay free. Good to live in the free state of Florida. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician, Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.